Well, greetings folks. My name is Reverend Isaac Mundy and I'm the minister here at uh, Trenton United Church. Uh, folks, if you're ever wondering when I come in, sometimes I might just check my hair. <laughs> I can see myself when we're filming and then I think, oh boy, what's going on there? So <laughs> that's uh, that's what that's what's happening there. I I'm Isaac Mundy. I'm the minister here at Trenton United Church and I'm here with Diane Goyesh, who is our music director. And uh, we're glad to be worshiping with you folks today. Uh, of course, uh, many of you will know uh, that over the past number of weeks, we have been worshiping online and in print uh, because of the high numbers in terms of the, the COVID pan pandemic and particular everything that's been happening with the Omicron variant. Uh, we do have good news that you, uh, uh, many of you will have seen coming out through your email blast earlier in the week that um, we are planning on uh, joining together again on February 20th to recommence with in-person worship services at 10:30 uh, a.m. on the 20th. So, of course, we are still going to have all of our our COVID guidelines in place in terms of uh, contact tracing at the door. Um, we're going to be asking everyone to continue to wear masks and uh, to be able to maintain social distancing and, uh, and have a uh, uh, and usher uh, seating folks in the correct places in the sanctuary just to make sure that we keep everybody as safe as possible during this period of time. Folks, I have a few different announcements um, as well that I would like to bring to your attention. This coming uh, Tuesday, February 8th, um, we've been doing lots of different uh, uh, 
training and, and um, guideline work to help out our volunteers who have been working with the warming center. And um, one of the things that's come up is uh, how do we get a better understanding of, uh, of addiction and harm reduction and substance uh, use for, uh, for those uh, within the population who might be uh, um, impacted by some of those different issues. Um, we are gonna be having a session here in the sanctuary on February 8th. Um, on, at uh, 10 a.m. Um, and that is a Tuesday. We're going to be having this session with Jeremy Owens and Christy Reeve, who are um, public health nurses with our public health unit specializing in harm reduction and understanding some of the issues around substance use. And so um, a number of our volunteers are going to be coming for that session from the Warming Center. Some of the folks from the steering committee and wider organizations will be gathering um, here for that session as well. Um, but if you are somebody who is interested, maybe you um, volunteer with the community meal program or somewhere else in your life or just are interested in learning a little bit more about this. Um, we do have, we're allowed in terms of public health to have up to 25 individuals in this sanctuary space. So if you're interested, you do need to sign up beforehand and let me know, but contact me at the church office. And um, I am also hoping that uh, we will be able to have Zoom up and running. So even if um, you're not able to be here in person, but would like to be able to join us online, let me know and I'll make sure to send you that link. Uh, it's going to be a great session, and we're looking forward to having Jeremy and Christy with us next, next Tuesday. Also, uh, an upcoming Bible study with Reverend David. Uh, this is a Bible study called How to Read the Bible and Still Be a Christian, based on the writing, uh, or some of the writings and reflections of John Dominic Cross, and uh, probably for lots of us in the life of faith. When we uh, read scripture, there are things there that are inspiring and uh, help guide us in our everyday lives. But sometimes we come across uh, texts that maybe contain um, issues around uh, violence or vengeance or, or exclusion or different things that, uh, that we have difficulty with. And so uh, part of this session will be how do we reconcile the different aspects of scripture and, and how do we then make sense of that in our current day life of faith. Um, so um, this will be a, a morning session, um, 10 a.m. on Tuesdays, February 15th, 22nd, and March 1st, taking place in the Middle Auditorium and online if you'd like to be able to join us that way via Zoom. Please let us know, though, if you're planning on attending. We would uh, just like to be able to have a sense of numbers just to make sure we can do spacing and so forth. Uh, but uh, yeah, please uh, let, let us know if you are interested in joining for that session. The first session on the 15th will be, Why Do Christians Read the Bible Anyways? Um, a few other announcements that I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, annual meeting coming up on March the 6th, but if you have a report that um, you'd like to be able to share, and we are hoping that all the teams and committee, uh, committees will be submitting their reports by February 8th. So that is this coming Tuesday. Make sure to have those into the church office to Catherine so that uh, um, she has lots of time to be able to make sure to be able to bring together these different reports because there's a lot involved in creating our annual report each year. Just a heads up, um, this is a few Sundays in, in advance, but just wanting to let you know that I will be away from the church from February 21st to the 27th. Reverend Norman Long, who lives right here in Trenton, will be covering uh, for me in terms of any pastoral care emergencies that might arise, and his contact information is in the uh, congregational announcements that go out in the email blast each week, uh, or you can reach out to the office to, uh, to get that information as well. And we are also looking forward to having Reverend Ed Bentley join us to lead worship on the 27th uh, on that Sunday when I'm going to be away. Um, I think there might be uh, just, yeah, a couple more announcements. Uh, just a reminder, too, that if you are interested in terms of joining in the LGBTQ two plus working group that is looking uh, towards uh, fostering discussion and learning around uh, inclusivity here in our congregation. Please reach out to Dan Klost and um, we're planning on having a, uh, a, a meeting at some point in uh, the, coming, uh, the coming month or so. So we hope that uh, we'd love to have you as a part of that group in terms of some of that, uh, that looking into the future as a welcoming uh, space here at Trenton United Church. And uh, 
even more wi widely um, than just that one group, we are uh, asking folks uh, right now as we come up to our annual meeting, many people in our congregation who have led committees for a number of years. Um, we are so thankful for the ways that they have shared their gifts, but, but several folks are going to be stepping down from their role on council and in different aspects of committee life, as, as is natural and part of the, the life of a congregation. But we really need your help, and so we're asking you to consider, are you feeling called right now? And could you just even if you're thinking, no way, uh, uh, or thinking, yes, yes, this has to be me, um, take a few moments this week and just pray, God, are you inviting me in some way to offer leadership in our church congregation? Uh, there's just so much that is exciting about being part of Trenton United Church, whether it's things like the warming center or learning sessions, and even during this pandemic time, so many amazing things have been taking place. And so we're inviting you to be a part of that joy and excitement and, uh, and to th uh, think about ways that God might be calling you. And if you do think that you are being called, then I'd invite you to reach out to uh, Rosemary Embry. Uh, you can phone her or, or send her an email or get her contact info through the church office. And uh, Or if you want me to forward your name on to the nominating committee, uh, I would be happy to do so as well. Folks, I think that those are all the announcements that I'm going to bring to your attention for today. And so um, let's join our hearts now together in worship uh, by, first of all, uh, giving one another a sign of Christ's peace. So friends, the peace of Christ to all of you at home. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Christ everyone. And as I light the Christ candle, I am going to, let me just see here, I want to make sure, well, I'm hoping you folks, you folks will see the flame arising from the, from the Christ candle and uh, know that uh, even sometimes when we can't see Christ's light, that it is still present there in our hearts. So let's pray these words together. Christ Jesus, when we are afraid, Speak words of comfort to the small child within us. Light up the night with your brightness. In our worship, help us to find strength in you. Amen. And friends, I'm going to invite you to join me in singing our opening hymn, which is number 660 in Voices United, How Firm a Foundation. <laughs> Friends, our, our scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalms, one of the shortest psalms, but uh, carrying such a, a deep, uh, deep expression of uh, peace and comfort for those perhaps passing through times of fearfulness. So let's listen to these words together. 
O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time and forevermore. May the Holy Spirit be at work in our contemplation of Scripture. Let us deepen that reflection as Diane leads us in our ministry of music. so much, Diane. That's a, that's a piece that is new to me and just so meaningful so, and beautiful. Well, folks, we're embarking um, on a several-week uh, series. You, you probably saw me mention in the email blast this week uh, about uh, a sermon series around facing our fears and uh, 
um, I'll invite you, before we enter into that time of reflection, to, uh, to uh, lift our hearts to God in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, folks, I've been taking you around to different parts of the sanctuary all uh, through this time when we have been away from in-person worship. And uh, you will have heard in the announcements that we are going to be heading back to in-person worship on February 20th, but we still have a few more Sundays. And I thought I would take you um, behind the scenes here. I'm just kind of in behind the lectern at the front of the church, and you can see that we have some different wires that you might not be able to see, and, and a, an electrical outlet that's here that helps power a HEPA filter, and I think maybe this thermostat, and maybe a light over on, on the lectern. I'm not, I'm not even completely sure how it all works. Um, but I'm here behind the scenes because I was thinking about one of my first memories as a child. I, I was probably pretty little, because I think I was still even crawling around on the ground, or at least um, not far from eye level to, to something pretty close to where um, uh, an electrical socket might be. And, and I remember looking at an electrical socket in our house in Stroud, Ontario, and um, seeing, do you remember one of those plug protectors that uh, maybe you had as a, as a parent that you put in the wall to make sure your, your kids didn't get electrocuted? Um, I was able to sort of jimmy it out of the wall socket, and I was so curious about what those little holes were, even though I probably have been told not to play around uh, with it, and so I either had a toy or maybe just my finger, I can't remember what, and sort of stuck it in there and got it. <laughs> um, don't worry, I was okay. I mean, some of you might be wondering, oh, that's how he ended up the way that he is. But uh, it wasn't too bad of a shock. I remember crying and feeling pretty upset and feeling really scared, so scared that uh, I can tell you that uh, to this day, I have never stuck my finger in, a, in, a light, uh, in an electric socket again. Um, for lots of us, we, we have lots of early memories, right, of childhood. Some of them are probably fond ones, but you might have a memory of the first time that you felt really genuinely scared of something. Was it a moment like me where uh, you got a little bit hurt and, uh, and shy from something that might be able to do damage to your body? Or maybe it was somebody who got upset uh, with you in your household and, uh, and you remember feeling fearful in terms of that or feeling lost or alone. There are these moments when we are little where we can feel very fearful. And um, sometimes we can end up carrying those feelings of fear um, from the past into our present as well. Um, over the next few weeks, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we approach fear as a people of faith. Uh, we know that all through this, uh, this pandemic time over the last two years, there's been a lot that folks have felt fearful. There has been the very real risks associated with the COVID-19 virus, both in terms of our health and even uh, it being a risk to our, our, our lives. And, uh, and we know that there has been a tragic loss of life and health for so many people during this time. There have also been other fears um, that people have had, whether that has been fear around the vaccine or um, government conspiracies uh, around the virus or, or maybe sometimes people feeling fearful about food shortages. And a lot of those fears, we've been able to realize um, that, that the things that maybe some people had been scared of being risks weren't the risks that, that we thought they were. But still, sometimes those fears persist. And when so much of our world has been changing, um, it, 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 it's, it's not surprising that so many fears are present there in our society, those both grounded in real threats and, and fears that uh, perhaps are associated with things that are less of a threat than maybe some have imagined. Thinking about fear, I I've been thinking about uh, an individual by the name of Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, you might have seen in the news over the last little while, um, Thich Nhat Hanh was a Vietnamese Buddhist monk, and uh, he passed away this past January and was a great faith leader, both during the 20th century and into the 21st century. 
he was from Vietnam and did uh, much work to be able to help in um, uh, striving for peace in that country during the period of the Vietnam War. He was deeply respected by a number of Christian figures, including um, theologians and thinkers such as uh, Thomas Merton and uh, Daniel Berrigan, and even Martin Luther King Jr. actually nominated Thich Nhat Hanh for a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, while he comes from a different tradition than us, uh, I, I think that he also has a lot of wisdom to be able to offer to people of, of many different faiths. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about some of his thinking about fear, because he actually wrote a book entitled Fear and, and how to uh, journey through some of the fears that we can have and how to weather the storm uh, of the fears that we can, uh, we can experience in our lives. We know that there are some fears out there that are real risks to both uh, our, our spiritual well-being and our physical well-being. But uh, Thich Nhat Hanh asks us to think about what are the ways uh, that we sometimes carry forward our fears from the past and allow those fears to, um, to dominate our, our present, even if maybe we're not in much, uh, as much of a risk as we somehow believe that, that we might be. And uh, he has, uh, he has some, some beautiful quotes. I'm going to read a couple of them uh, to you. One of the things that he says is, we can transform our fear. The practice of living fully in the present moment can give us the courage to face our fears and no longer be pushed and pulled around by them. There's this idea that when we can fully uh, embrace our, our understanding of our own fear, that then we kind of don't get... Um, influenced by them sort of from the side. Sometimes our fears, um, if we try, try to just push them down or push them away, we can end up um, associating uh, or, or we can end up um, getting angry or, or even uh, down on ourselves. But, uh, but Thich Nhat Hanh, he, he suggests that in some ways we allow those fears to come out and almost to uh, embrace that little child that each one of us, you know, we experienced fears uh, when we were little about uh, things under the bed or, or in the closet or the electrical socket, uh, um, carrying forward some of uh, our understanding of what it was like to be a little child. And he suggests, you know what, even just kind of letting out our fears. So if we're feeling scared, don't just push it away, but um, to be able to say, oh, I'm scared about this, and um, I feel alone, I feel like I'm powerless, I feel like I I'm scared I'm going to die. And even if the risk isn't really that big, just to take some time to ourselves. You don't have to go and do this in downtown Trenton. You can do it, uh, do it at your house when nobody is, is around, if, if you'd prefer. But allowing that to come out, but then to speak words of comfort to that little child, to reassure that child that we're no longer powerless, that uh, even if um, we're still young but a little bit more mature, that we can say to that child, don't worry, I'm here for you. We can say in the Christian faith, God is here for you. You have strength, you have different ways of coping with things, and, uh, and you no longer have to be scared in that same way. Speaking words gently. And, and folks, isn't that what is taking place in some ways with the psalm that we read today? Uh, the psalmist speaks these words uh, of comfort, and we can hear her voice uh, ringing out. Let, let's listen to her words. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. The sense that uh, as a mother comforts her child, we can also comfort that inner child that is feeling distress or moments of fear and, and acting out in, uh, in different ways. We can speak to, to that child that is with us, that our, our own soul we can somehow uh, understand as being like that child that is with us, but also bringing that child into a place of deeper maturity. We hear that the child has now been weaned and isn't dependent on maybe some of those different emotions of anxiety that, uh, that, that was there to keep us safe, but that somehow we are able to soothe the child and to be able to allow that child to look around at the world in the present moment and to see 
maybe there aren't quite as many fears as I've, I've held on to. Now, of course, folks, if you are being chased through the jungle by a, a giant lion, uh, I'm not going to suggest that you sit down and, and meditate and uh, um, <laughs> try and comfort yourself. Keep on running, okay? I want you to be safe. But in some of those situations where maybe we are feeling fear that is uh, connected to some of the emotions that, that maybe we don't quite need to feel as anxious about, I think this is a beautiful psalm to speak to our own souls. This is, these are beautiful words that we can speak to that fearful uh, place in, in our lives. And the psalmist uh, says that um, she doesn't look up to the sky and, uh, and far away to things that are too grand or too abstract. Sometimes we do that with fear, right? We either go back to those emotions from the past or uh, end up projecting into the future all of our worst thoughts. But she brings herself back down to earth and focuses on those places of comfort. And then she closes this very simple psalm with, with these words, O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. So that sense of comfort in the present, and instead of projecting fear into the future, giving ourselves in hope to what God has planned for each one of us. Folks, we can trust in the God who comes to us and speaks these words, don't be afraid. What is the place of fear for you right now? It might be pandemic related, it might be something else. We can speak to the child that is there and to say these words, be still, be comforted, know that God is with you and to treat ourselves with compassion. And in that way, when we allow ourselves to enter into that place of calm, we can then share our love with God and share our love with one another. It's for all of these things, the sharing of this love and for God's words to us, reminding us not to be afraid, that we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, I'm sure that many of you, like me, have been following some of the events that have been taking place over the past week or so in Ottawa, and we know that many protests have been taking place, and uh, I, I really truly believe that it's very important for us to create space for, uh, for all people to be able to lift up their voices, and while um, I would say that the message um, of protest being offered by, um, by many of those groups in Ottawa is not one that I share, I'm glad that they can protest. Um, what we have seen, though, is that there have been some smaller groups within that group who have, who have done damage in, in, in several different ways. Uh, and I know that many vulnerable groups in Ottawa have been feeling intimidated, which uh, um, we're not okay with as a, a, a people of faith. And, uh, and of course, seeing some of those images a week ago of, of different flags uh, um, promoting hatred with something that uh, is never something that, that we want to see in any way in our, this society or, or any other societies. And I was very touched by a prayer that our moderator, Richard Bott, wrote in response to um, some of those events that took place. And uh, uh, we decided uh, this week to offer up that prayer in the time of our pastoral prayers. Um, but also to sing the refrain, thinking about that idea of fear and speaking uh, words of comfort to that fear of um, offering the refrain, don't be afraid. So I'm going to invite you to join me in lifting up our hearts in prayer as we, as we read the prayer of our moderator, Richard Bott. <laughs> Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. God of love and life, today I saw banners of hate lifted to the sky in a place that is dear to my heart. The battle flags of a failed nation state confederated for the continued enslavement of black people. 
the swastika of another failed nation state whose core principles brought forth the Shoah, the systematic murder of over six million Jews, and a eugenic platform to eradicate anyone who did not fit its image of perfection flew in the midst of a protesting crowd of Canadians. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always Protest I understand, even if I feel the reasons are misguided and wrong. But those symbols of white supremacy, representations of a desire to enslave and eradicate, those flags of hatred's horror, they should never be flown in a way that honors them and the principle for which they stand. Don't be afraid, my love is strong. My love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. God, help us to put those symbols in the places that will make us remember what they represent with horror and grief and fight against them ever being raised up as possibilities for the future. God, help us to challenge the unthinking hatred, the fear and the greed that give it power, the anti-Semitic hatred, the idea that white is right. God, help us because we can't seem to do it on our own. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be Friends, together, let us lift up the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's join now in singing our closing hymn, which is number 652 in Voices United, Be Still My Soul. Oh, 
shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, life's tempest still obey. The voice that once the waves wild fury stayed. Be still, my soul, the hour is hastening on when we shall be forever in God's peace when disappointment grief and fear are gone love's joys restored our striving all shall see are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. And friends, I'll invite you to join me in blessing uh, one another with the words that, uh, that are offered for today. Go with the blessing of the God who leads us beyond our fears. Be blessed in your giving and in your receiving. Be blessed in the knowledge that God is with us and we are not alone. Amen. And friends, as you go out from our space of worship, I invite you to go as a people that centers themselves in the peace of God. Know that there will be moments of fear and that sometimes we will cry out in fear but know that God comes to us and says, do not be afraid. Let us now share that message with the wider world. Go now in peace. Amen.